What's up guys, it's your boy Zion, and I'm bringing you another Destiny video. Um, the gameplay in the background is just me doing a bounty I needed and killing Sepix Prime, but I wanted to talk to you about the recent statement a Bungie developer actually made. Um, Bungie basically admitted they fucked up. Yeah. You wouldn't expect it out of a AAA company such as Bungie to go ahead and be like, Yeah, we might have fucked up. Typically, developers hide behind, um... The fact that it was their creative vision and they just had an idea and ran with it and they're not going to change the game or fix anything because that was the intended outcome for the game. That's how they actually wanted the game to be played or um, how they actually wanted the game to function. That's typically what developers say. Now, Bungie came out and was like, yeah, guys, we kind of like fucked ourselves. What they went ahead and said was... It was a bad idea be for them to go ahead and make um, the Vault of Glass basically pointless. They went ahead, one thing I'll give Bungie is they went ahead and said they wanted to try to make this game more inclusive. They also made it very clear that they intended for loot to be easy to get in the Crota Raid. They raised the drop rates, fixed the drop rates in the Crota Raid because they wanted loot to be easy to get. Now. What they did with this was they implemented a new system for materials. Well, with this new material system, it made the old materials, the Ascendant Shards and Ascendant Energies, obsolete. There's really no reason to use them. Plus, what they said was they trivialized all the people who had actually run their old raid. All that gear was obsolete, and on top of that, they had trivialized it and made it so... Um, by offering vendor gear that made you level 31, it made the Vault of Glass basically useless because Vault of Glass gear didn't do shit. You could just buy gear that had better stats than the Vault of Glass. So, with this they admitted they fucked up by implementing level 31 vendor gear. My idea is, they didn't really fuck up. They kind of just went about things a little twisted. Um, basically, what I think they should have done is... They should have just scaled Vault of Glass up. Given the people who had run the Vault of Glass before an option where they could have run the Vault of Glass on a harder difficulty. They could have run Vault of Glass level 30 or level 32, I mean, and it drops gear. Kind of like the Crota Raid where you can go into it at 30, but in all actuality, the enemies are like level 32. So you can go ahead and you can run through and get gear from the Vault of Glass that actually scales up similar to Crota. This way, it gives you a reason to play the Vault of Glass because maybe you want some gear that had better stats in the Vault of Glass than the raid gear you got in Crota's End. This way, it also gives you, what, six more raids? Now, three raids you could have done on top of the three Crota raids every week and increased your chance of loot and increased how quickly you could have leveled up. I think that would be a great idea for them to implement if they went ahead and made it so like each raid was kind of like a stepping stone to the newer raid. So for example, if they made it so uh, Vault of Glass was level 32, Crota's and Hard Mode is level 32, and then um, once House of Wolves hits, if they implement a level 34, because that should be the new level cap in House of Wolves, implement a level 4 um, version of each of the raids. So basically you can get gear in the older raids that you already know the mechanics for so you can go in and run the newer raid and not have as much of a learning curve to the newer raids plus you don't have to deal with shitty drops or multiple drops because you can mix, mix and match gear. Now another thing Bungie went ahead and admitted that they fucked up with was the upgrading of exotics. Basically they made it so you had to re-farm for a glimmer and redo all your stats and re-upgrade your exotics if you already had them. If you upgraded your exotics to 331 damage or the new damage cap, you had to upgrade or re-level your guns basically instead of having to farm it all over again. I like how they implemented this system. I like that um, they made it so you didn't have to go ahead and get all those exotics to drop randomly all over again. I think that was a good idea. The problem is they made it so you had to reform, which became such a glimmer sink that it's a hassle for people. They went ahead and said that they fucked up. They shouldn't have made it so you had to re-upgrade your entire gun, but they need a way still in which uh, exotics are still relevant. You don't have to go ahead and get another drop to happen. You can go ahead and use old exotics you already have and upgrade them without it being such a hassle such as 
re-upgrading everything and basically doing everything you've ever done with particular weapons all over again. That was a bad idea. They've admitted it's a bad idea. So my idea is they go ahead and add trees. This would be awesome. You see in the Abyss Defiant I'm using, if you watch my review video, they have a tree in here where it's customizable. If they added extra skill trees, so say like each upgrade, they add in another one of the um, skill trees that gives you like lightweight or hard, um, hard for hammer forge. If they gave you like perks like that and then three more damage upgrades with each time you had to upgrade your exotics, it would make upgrading your exotics worthwhile because then you could completely customize the gun to work in any situation for you and it adds more customization to the game which was one of the key selling points when they actually introduced Destiny. They bragged about a game that was endlessly customizable. So if they added this option it would go right with the trend of the game and it would fix their whole not re-upgrading the entire gun but giving you something to work for, the proverbial carrot on the stick you could say um, for why you would want to upgrade guns besides the increased damage because let's be honest increased damage isn't that good and I say that because if you look at the word of Crota versus the fate bringer the word of Crota fully upgraded 331 word of Crota versus a fully upgraded 300 damage fate bringer basically um, is mute the fate bringer wins out in almost any situation on top of that it's only a 2% increase in damage on enemies that are your level. So the Fatebringer is still a viable gun even though it's a level 300 damage. So technically you don't even really have to upgrade your exotics. It keeps them relevant and gives you a reason to upgrade it. However, it's not like you're really missing out too too much by not upgrading your exotics as you can see in the situation of the Fatebringer versus the Word of Crota. So, those are the main things Bungie admitted they fucked up on. I'm happy to see they're admitting they messed up. Um, they're really being awesome about this whole paying attention to the community and making sure that the community is happy because in the end, it's us who make their game what it is. If we don't play their game, if we don't enjoy their game, they don't have a game to really reinforce and their 10-year plan falls on its ass. Now, what does this bring you like flashbacks of. If you guys have been a fan of the channel for a while, you know I did Borderlands the pre-sequel videos when I first started the channel. Why? Because Borderlands was an awesome game. Except the pre-sequel was absolute shit and Gearbox made it a point to basically disassemble their community, you could say. Um, they went ahead and talked down to members of their community and made it so the community that had once made the green great, a really friendly and helpful community, now wanted nothing to do with them and basically everything Gearbox has done so far with the pre-sequel has been too short, too late. They haven't introduced anything that the community really wanted when they wanted it. They basically lost their entire community because they weren't responding. Bungie on the other hand has been great about responding and has been absolutely amazing with implementing changes that the community wants. Basically letting the community field test their game and then fixing what the community likes and what the community doesn't like. They fixed the troll arc to a degree. He drops legendaries and things now more often. You don't get blues out of the legendary engrams, things like that. They fixed because the community complained about it. Um, some community members complained about the cheese in the Crota raid. They fixed it. A lot of issues that the community has spoken about have been fixed. So I'm happy to see Bungie paying attention to their community and making sure that this game is as great as we can fucking make it. Because in the end, there's lots of us and not too many of them. So if we find something that's not good in the game, it's good for them to have all the feedback that they do to go ahead and fix it and make it a better game for us so it's more enjoyable. But... Thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, a comment, a favorite, and subscribe. And let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you think it was cool that Bungie admitted they fucked up? Or do you think um, they should have just like kept it a secret? Or do you agree with the changes that I think they should implement in the game? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, I'll see you guys later.